A very good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Thank you so much for joining another episode on the, the Life Signatures Radio. It's a daily show where I talk about purpose, productivity, and resilience. I do this through a series of messages. By default, that's what we do, and so that uh, we can be able to zero in on a particular subject matter and churn it. 360 degrees. That being said, we started two days ago talking about why self-deficiency is the biggest enemy of your progress or my progress. Self-deficiency. What in the world is this? It is something that we impose upon ourselves. We feel like we are self-deficient even if we are not. Even if we are all good, we feel we are self-deficient for one reason or another. And as long as we feel self-deficient, we will seek what that status requires of us. I quoted Carter G. Woodson, and I'm going to quote that guy again in the episode today, that even though we feel like we are inferior, we will not need someone to give us an inferior position. We will demand it ourselves. You know where it's coming from? It's coming from our feeling of self-deficiency. So today, let's continue talking about this. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Carter G. Woodson, in his book, The Miseducation of the Negro, he said, if you can control a man's thinking, you do not have to worry about his action. When you determine what a man shall think, you do not have to concern yourself about what he will do. If you make a man feel that he is justly inferior, he will can, you, you, you do not have to compel him to accept an inferior status, for he will seek it himself. If you can make a man think that he is justly an outcast, you do not have to order him to the back door. He will go without being told, and if there is no back door, his very nature will demand one. See, that's how powerful self-deficiency is. See, self-deficiency is an inside game. You cannot be self-deficient from the outside. It's an internal working. You might be born royalty, but if you believe you ain't, you will behave like a commoner. And we see this. I mean, the human, we see all of us born in situations, born in circumstances, as in brought up in this world with the outside look who will tell us that that guy is blessed, that guy is good, that guy is this and that guy is that. But themselves, they are not feeling what we are seeing. If they are not feeling what we are seeing, it is because there is a working of self-deficiency taking place. And as long as there is self-deficiency going on in my psyche, it becomes difficult for me to succeed, to progress. Things that I can easily conquer, they become mountainous. They become like a Goliath who is taunting me for 40 days plus. And I'm doing absolutely nothing. Because I am feeling self-deficient. I'm incapable of taking care of the situation at hand. That is self-deficiency. 
So if you will want to deal with self-deficiency, you will need to look at the internal workings of your life. It is not an external thing. You don't heal self-deficiency by buying a car. You don't heal self-deficiency by being fashionable. It, those things can help you to some degree, to some extent. But the moment you start driving that car, the self-deficiency still rears its ugly head because you bought the car to heal the self-deficiency. But it's possible for you to walk around the streets, even barefoot, but you feel that you're glorious. You don't need... Uh, uh, trappings you don't need some appendages to add on to you so that you can feel like you're glorious and you feel like you're enough in other words things flimsy things are not the ticket they are not the solution to the problem of self-deficiency it's an inner working it's an inner game and of course we've said that someone said if the enemy within is not conquered the enemy outside can do you no harm huh? That's the point. That's the whole point of self-sufficiency and self-deficiency. Another person who wrote the inner game of tennis said that something to the effect that your greatest opponent is not the one across the net, but the one within yourself. In fact, they normally say that a very good tennis opponent is a very good person that you need to keep because they make you sharper and better. Clearly, if the inner game is poisoned, huh, then the outer game is lost, either immediately or eventually. You know that. Eventually, you just, I mean, you, if you feel you're deficient, even if we put you on the high table, you will look for an excuse to get out of that high table because you are uncomfortable in, a, in that particular place you you feel i don't belong here this is not my table this is not where i belong i was not born for this it's an internal working the manifestation of self-deficiency can be seen in different aspects of life but for the most part ladies and gentlemen it will be a result of feeling that we do not measure up to the popular culture of the day we do not measure up to the status that has been according to us we do, we do not measure up one way or another we feel some, I mean, some Soviet. We feel like, you know, we are a, a little bit lower. Perhaps we do not have that degree. The culture of the day rewards the degree. So you feel self deficient. Perhaps we do not have the money. And the culture of the day looks for people who have the money if you see on facebook how women normally talk about men if a man says a woman is supposed to be a b c and d the women will say the man is supposed to have money and the men who don't have money they feel self deficient in fact by the way they can be run over by barrages of insults from women who do not who do not know better actually because by the way money is a cycle you can put down a man today or even a woman you can put them down today and tomorrow they have it perhaps we do not have that car and we feel like the society today looks upon with respect those ones who are driving so the fact that i am not having a car makes me to feel deficient self-deficient perhaps i don't have those fine and fashionable clothes as compared to other people around me it can cause me to feel self-deficient. It's an inner working. Perhaps I do not belong to a fancy club or any other club for that matter, any club for that matter. It makes me feel self-deficient, especially if the people around me belong to clubs. Perhaps I do not feel loved or wanted. I feel like I'm lacking something, so I feel self-deficient. Perhaps we do not feel like we are enough in and of ourselves. So what happens? We feel self-deficient. It's an inner working. The enemy within. And now the interesting thing is that this inner working is sometimes as a result of outside observation. 
all these things I'm mentioning, and there could be very many others, by the way. People feel self-deficient because uh, social media pages, they have less followers than others. They put a post somewhere, they've been twerking, and nobody notices. I mean, you go and you do some antics, you show your body parts to, to people, and nobody cares. You feel self-deficient. It's an inner working. It's an inner working that is necessitated by the outside things that we see. It's a trap, ladies and gentlemen. And we're going to, to talk about this uh, further and see some of the things that, you know, can, can, can come out of this. But it's an inner game. The solution is inside, even as the problem is inside. Our problem is that we want to get a solution from outside. And yet the problem is in the inside. The outside dictates the inside, actually. If you're going to be ruled in your life by what you see, by your feelings, huh? by comparison, and I'm going to talk about all those things, comparing yourself to other, other people, and you want to feel glorious this is what's going to happen you're going to start killing people you're going to start having jealous thoughts about other people you're going to start bringing other people down because they've got to be down so that you can feel sufficient and i've got bad news for you no matter how many people you bring down you are a sandwich there will always be someone better than you always there will always be someone with a cuter wife there will always be someone with a cuter face, a cuter lip. There will always be someone with a big, whatever it is, better than you. There will always be somebody better than you. Someone with much more intellect, someone with much more fashionable clothes, someone with much more acceptance, someone who is much more lovable. There will always be someone better than you. And on the flip side, there will always be someone worse than you. You are in the middle. The secret is internal it is not external it's not someone who's better than you or someone who's worse than you the secret is you regardless of where you find yourself paul the apostle said i can do all things through christ i know how to abase and how to abound i know how to have life with abundance and i know how to have life without stuff and either case it doesn't change me it doesn't bother me i'm good now that is a place of deliverance, a place of glory, a place of self-sufficiency. It is not pegged on any externals. It is always about the inner game, your inner game. Woe to you if you work for a boss who is self-deficient. Woe to you if you're married to someone who is self-deficient. I tell you, woe to you if you are a parent and you are self-deficient. Woe to you if you are in a relationship with people who are self-deficient, who they can't be glorious in and of themselves, who feel like they are being put down at every time. Woe to you. The solution, my friends, is not external. The solution is internal. We learned about David in the past two episodes. We saw how that guy conquered the internal guy. And therefore he was able to conquer the external guy. That's the problem. We look externally to try to solve an internal problem. And as long as we look, you're, you're going to blame millions of people. The day you will look in the mirror the day you will notice that my problem is in town my problem is not my boss my problem is not my children my problem is not the government or the president that we elected my problem is not my husband my problem is not my wife huh? i am the problem or the problem is within me the day that happens that's the day you're going to start having liberation in self-deficiency. Let me say this in closing. You cannot blame an external for self-deficiency. 
And as long as you keep blaming an external for self deficiency, you know what's gonna happen? You will not get healed. You will not come to a place of self sufficiency by blaming something that is not you. Period. You can take that to the bank. Tomorrow we start going deeper into this. Until then, bye bye. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.